let's talk about yesterday. So one of the biggest thing we learned yesterday was uh, we showed the model for experts, how the expert industry works and what do you look like, right? I'll put the slides up so you guys remember it, right? So let's do, where is the slides going? So today we're going to talk about framing. This is today's topic. Let's go back to the slide number one. So this is what we talked about. So yesterday was main thing. Uh, Philip, just uh, uh, we're recapping it. I've got the videos for you. I'll give you the access to the video as well. So you'll get that. Uh, but one of the things we talked about yesterday, anything we do, anything you guys are going to be doing, please follow this model because you'll see that. We talk about teaching. We talk about talking to the clients. We're going to follow this model to talk about it exactly that way, um, which is going to be, oh, what's going on with this? Which is going to be exactly how to talk to your clients. Mm. If this works again. Oh, oh this works. Uh, so main one was the expert. Who's the expert? What do you guys do? So the main thing you guys do is this one. That's it. Experts help people to move forward. And that's the only thing you need to understand it. You don't need to put any thoughts, any, anything on top of that. You're just helping them move forward, right? Um, this is what we talked about, right? So this is the mastery. How to become a master in that topic. Number one is a specific stuff. Claim that a master your topic. Pick up your tribe. Discover the problem. Define your story. Create a solution. Create an avenue to connect and do the business. When I say avenue to connect, remember what we talked about earlier? It's really hard for people to connect with you today. They don't know how to hire you for their services. Because even though you follow and have the best service in the market, it's really hard for them to connect with you for any space. So you need to create that model so people. Remember, I have a step-by-step -step process. People can, who can hire me or people who come into the workshops and stuff. I have a process for that. You wouldn't believe every other day I get a message now on LinkedIn, when is my next workshop? Now people are asking it. And that's the best place to be in. When people are starting to ask you, right? So you, everybody has to sort of get into that level. So this is all, this is the main thing, right? For you guys as well. Pick up, a fun, pick up a niche, which niche you're going to work in. We talked about it uh, yesterday about different niche. Your niche is security, that is the management, project management. If Philip's accounting, pick up your advisory, right? Strategic advisor, right? That's high level. You work with the CEOs. You're a strategic advisor. You're an executive mentor, right? At that level. So pick up your niche in that space and which way you want to go. And then you craft your product and start doing that work. And then you message. We talk about the message today. What message are you going to do? After lunch, this is today's topic, right? We talk about sales and we talk about message. You need to give very specific message. We want to craft that message for you. You just don't want to talk about it, right? So this is all this done. We talked about this. We don't need this. We don't need this. This is what it is, right? The end result was this. Success formula, you have a recipe, we'll create your recipe, we'll make you a mentor, we'll make you an authority, and you guys, you're going to create your own communities, part of that, and you need to teach people to have a winning mindset. That's what you're going to be doing now. Right? This is what you need to teach other people, teach your uh, clients. This is how it looks like. The law, you need to understand, you understood the law, law of the nature, or law of the success, right? Then you found your niche. We're going to work in the niche. Then you're going to do a client conversion. We're going to talk about today. And we're going to talk about market. We're going to talk about it exactly how you can actually get the clients now. How to actually do a fishing, not hunting. That's a strategy, right? And then you're going to create a delivery system. How are you going to deliver the clients in that space? And this is applies to every business, blockchain, IT, accounting, whichever business you want to apply it to. Um, this is, we done, we done this, that's okay, we need, oh, this is a math behind it, right? Remember the math? Success math, you have a problem, which is a present situation where you're at, and you want to get, or your client need to go to the destination, and you have a strategy, you need to action, there is going to be a time, compound effect in that, and then you're going to get the destination. This is a pretty cool slide. Uh, your destination is $100,000, if you want to make $100,000, today is $1,000 in your bank account, and your strategy is become an expert at this level and whatever it is, find the niche and delivery system, follow the recipe, find your mentor, and then execute it, right? Then take an action on that. How are you going to execute it? We have the execution method. Remember what I said? One-on-one, do it with me. All that is an execution system. 
this is an ex that's an execution system this is what you need to do here right, so this is compound effect that's okay we've done this nothing is to lock all that you understood it this is experts business so this is the entire expert business in one line this is what you need to do. If you're doing anything else, it's just a waste of time for you and for everybody else. You're not going to make any money. You find a target market, you craft your product, you craft your product or service and just get the people results. That's what you're doing. You're not doing anything else. If you're doing anything else, you're just wasting your time. Cool? Yeah, this is the main thing. All right, experts, experts, you know that. This is, again, this is what it is, right? So this is the slide we're going to use pretty much for everything. This is the main slide here. Where you are today, wherever are, this is your present. If this is your present, this is your client's present as well. This everybody's present, right? We all live in this present or past with the values and everything. Everybody wants to go into their desired future. Everybody wants to be here. Your job is to fill that gap. The first question is you need to understand if somebody just randomly inviting you into the meetings and you know everybody's doing it, you need to understand what's the gap, where they want to get to. If you don't know that, if you don't see it, you can't help people. So it's going to be really, really hard, right? So you need to understand that bit. So people hire you as an expert to fill that gap. This is what we talked about yesterday. All right, so this is... This is the expert market, just to recap how you guys look like. Firstly, everybody's generic, everybody's journal, then now you want to pick a niche. Now, after this week, oh sorry, after this weekend, you're going to have this second thing, right? You're going to become a niche expert as a junior level, where you're going to start working towards. I don't know which niche is going to be, but you're going to pick some sort of niche, right? And then you're going to start working. And then after a certain time, after six months or something, you're going to be expert in that space. Like you know what the hell it's going on in that space. Then you're going to be group. You're going to start doing the group uh, in a consulting. And then it's online expert after that. So don't start doing online. When I say online, I meant online courses. Don't try to sell your courses online. No, it's going to be really hard to sell it. All right, we talked about this market analysis, all that. This was the important one. Um, let's look at these beliefs. We talked about these beliefs yesterday. Target market, we talked about target market, my journey to that. Okay, so Blue Ocean, so this is one main thing, right? Again, your skills, the market you're going to be targeting to, and your product and services. Where they intersect all of them, that's your perfect niche. Initially, when you get started, you're going to be here somewhere, you're going to be here somewhere, you're going to be here somewhere. It's not going to be nice and easy. It's not going to be clear. But what it means is at least you, your goal is to come into this space. Find the perfect product for the perfect market to fulfill with the perfect skill. That's your, you know, then that's where I want to be as well. When you turn on something, you know that, say for example, you turn on the Facebook ad, you start on Monday, you know that by Friday, you're going to have 100 registrations. You know that you're going to have this many people coming in. You know that. Because you tweak it so well, you know your message to market is right, you know where people is going to be turning up, you know how much you're going to be selling, everything is going to be predictable business. You want to get to that level, that's the end result. Where you wake up in the morning, doesn't matter where you are, where you live, you have a predictable business. If you don't have a predictable business today, that makes it harder for everybody today. Because that's where the desperation comes from. That's where people change from fishing to hunting because they go into the desperation mode. You don't want to be in that space. You don't want to be in a desperation space. You want to tweak it. You want to change it. Yes, but that's going to take a bit of time. So be a scientist. Don't be an artist in this space. Right? Keep changing it. Keep changing it based on the market feedback. So when you keep changing it, your niche is going to be perfect after a certain time. You might just hit a perfect niche day one. I don't know. That's some, I haven't been able to do it. I have to tweak it. I've been tweaking it based on what I believe the values are for people, right? What, are, what they believe in, what my client believe in, what they think is true, all that. 
Uh, we did this exercise yesterday with blockchain story, niche, all that. We haven't talked about MVP, right? No, we haven't talked about it. So we'll talk about it today. So before we get into that, we got a five minutes. I think Sandy's going to be here in five minutes. Let's talk about Alka. You didn't share anything you want to share from yesterday's. Any breakthrough, anything you sort of came up, anything happened yesterday? Anything? One thing I just, um, one of the things I kept thinking, um, you know how you think in your sleep, so that's something that's with you. Yeah, yeah. It's like giving pain to the client. Sorry, getting? Giving some pain to the client. Giving pain to the client. That's just like, we haven't done it, and I just kind of was, because maybe it's so fresh in my yeah. um, experience, and we've just started, mm. so we, as I said, like, people don't know what they want. Yes. And I don't think we kind of um, address that. So that 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 was one of the things. Like, a, uh, and that all relates to then the questions why, so and that sort of thing. So whatever I'm picking up, I'm writing on a page, and it's like that why and understanding what they want before interviewing them. Yes, that, that's just one thing stuck with me. Of all other things, obviously, which is yeah. touching it. But yeah. If you collide, there's only two things, right? If to find a perfect space, people as we human beings, we're either going away from a pain or going towards somewhere or desire, right? So if I'm standing here in the middle, if I'm not, I don't have a pain, I don't have anything, I don't have a desire, I'm just standing still. That's not your client. That's never your client. You're not speaking to those people, right? You don't want to waste your time. If you're trying to convert somebody into desire, you know, you're trying to give somebody desire, you can have holidays, somebody, you can have days, you can have that. If they don't have that, you're wasting your time. You can't wake people up. They need to be awake. Right? It takes a long, long time to wake them up. So you don't want to do that. You want to make sure that they have some sort of pain they want to get away from, or they have some sort of desire they want to get it to. When we, so now look at it. I, when I said I know, you know, your pains and desires, when I looked at your form, the one you filled it in for me, how that's how I found out your pains, right? So you got to do the same thing with your client, right? What I did with you, replicate that with your clients as well, so you understand it what their pains are. Does it make sense, right? When I said when I looked at yours, you know, ninety day plan, I clearly found out what Vic's pains are. He want to get away from nine to five job. This is his pain. I don't want to do 9 to 5. I want to do something. Even though he does not have a desire yet, he doesn't know what he wants in the future, but he want to get away from this thing. Right? So what I can do now? Offer him the product. Offer him something. Right? I know that. So that's what you need to do it as well. Does it make sense? Yeah. So keep in that way. Once you know people's problems, once you know their desires, you can craft your product based on that. Yep. Yeah? Cool. All right. So we are at, I think, 240. So we'll come back into the middle later. So this is all this we're going to talk about today. We'll talk about sales. We'll talk about, let's get into 240. 240. Where are we? Yes. We talk about this too sales but we talk about framing first this is the actual conversion look like I'll show you guys ah. Sandy's gonna be here in five ten minutes I think let's close the door if she's here not here she's got uh, a doctor she's coming on the way but let's talk about framing and frame control. Let's get started, right? So the biggest thing which I learned, and I talk about my experience all the time, uh, what happened is I spent so much time about these sales techniques, right? I've read, as I said, remember I said I had the biggest problem. My biggest problem was I did not understand how to get the sales done. I started a lot of businesses, and I failed pretty much straight after that because I did not know how to do the sales, how to have a predictable way of people coming in and giving me their business. It was really hard. It was so random that I was sick of that. And then I started reading a lot of books and started using sales techniques. I read Dan Kennedy. I read, name anybody, I read everybody, right? In the U.S. was pretty famous guy. I read 50, 60 books, especially on sales. 
and I started sort of understanding how the sale process works. But one of the things sales team talk about, you need to do a pre-close. There's different techniques they have it. You have to do this, you have to do that, you have to do this in a way that you speak to people. But then I started looking, these are techniques people are all aware of. Walk into a, any sale yard, do the same thing. they do the same thing, right? Yeah. And we, personally, I hate it. Yeah. I don't want to be salesy. I don't want to be salesy. I don't want to be that guy exactly like the car yard who knows the same technique as I do. So I was like, this is not what I want to do because that's not the way it should be. Sales shouldn't be salesy. Sales shouldn't be salesy. So what is it? When I speak to somebody, when I go somewhere, how do I actually understand people? It's just the human beings everywhere, right? We are all human beings. So before I start talking about sales, I need to understand the humans. Right? Then I can actually, I need to understand what impacts them. I need to understand what they like, what they don't like. I need to understand how to win any conversations. When I go out in the market, doesn't matter if it's a sales space, if I go in a social gathering, I just want to be in that space where I can speak to people and they just start liking me. You know, so then I started doing a bit of more research. I started doing it. I came across the neuro linguistic pro programming way of doing things as well. They talk about framing, and I thought, oh, that that's kind of interesting. But they also talk about different kind of framing. They talk about framing in a different sense. So neuro linguistic pro programming is a different framing. So I'm not going to talk about that at all. Um, Does it work? Sorry. Does it work? Uh, it does. Look, the one I'm going to talk about, it, it absolutely works. And uh, I've tried it again and again, and I'll open up the Pandora's box with you guys today, what I said yesterday, what it worked for me, and you tell me if that worked, because I'm going to talk about it, right? I'm going to show you the back-end kind of stuff today. What I did, and how I'm doing it with every client, that's how I'm getting the businesses as well. And it works. It worked for me, and that's why I'm starting to share. It's like, it works, guys. You try it as well. See if that works for you, right? You try it. It's not, as I said, it's a scientist, right? We are all scientists here. We want to try and we tweak it. If that doesn't work, tell me. Let's try it again and do something else. It's something which we're trying in a different way. So framing is, in a simple way, is um, this is what I felt, right? This is a fundamental disconnect between people we talk to. This is my discovery in a way. And I found it, a couple of other people talked about it um, on the internet as well, that uh, when we speak to people, when I'm so excited and I want to go and come and talk to you guys, say, for example, you come to my event or I'm walking into a, uh, you know, somewhere I'm going to present something, right, somewhere, or I'm walking into a meeting, I'm going to talk about something. I found out there is a fundamental disconnect between people when they share information. It's the way the disconnect is sort of comes out and we don't understand as human. Say, I'll give you that example as well. How you say things, how I'm saying right now is received. Um, when you came to my workshop for the first time, how I was saying stuff was received very differently by every one person in the room. So I needed to understand how you guys receive that information. For me to say something, I need to be on this side how you're receiving it as well. It's not a ping pong. It's not exactly the same way. It's not a, we tennis, we're playing tennis, I'm throwing at you, you're throwing back at me. Exactly the same way. It's not like that. It's not a ping pong. They don't have the same rackets. They don't have play the same game. I'm throwing with the tennis, you might be with the cricket bat on the other side. Right? It's that kind of disconnect. And it happens in every social settings. We are part of that. Every social setting. Sometimes, you are so excited. You know, you have idea which you think is going to change the world. And you go to your friend of yours. It was like, I love this idea. Look at this idea. How good it is. You know, I'm going to do this. And his your friend goes, what the hell? What kind of idea is this? It's stupid. Yeah, that feeling, right? And some sort of thing you are so excited about talking to somebody and telling them something. When you go to them and tell them, they just don't listen the way you listen to, the way you're telling them, right? They're just so cold, they're not doing anything about the idea. Then you're like, I'm so excited. I think it's going to do so much work. Why? Why? Why are they not excited as I am? What's the reason? Then I found out that the way you say stuff is not exactly the way it's received by them. Right? So the framing concept came in place. 
Sales in an art, you can learn how to get better at using the following skills, right? It's an art. You, you become better at it. You keep getting better at it, right? But because, before I sort of start more into that, let's talk about what is framing. In any social interaction, which includes sales and a business, you cannot have two different perspectives for the same product or the service to achieve a deal. That's given, right? If I, this is a cup of coffee, we all need to agree, I need to pay $3.50 to buy this coffee, and this is a coffee, and this is a cup of coffee. Both parties, the one who's selling and the one who's buying, need to agree to that. If we don't agree to that, there is no sales. Does it make sense? And there is no, so what happened in a social gathering, when you talk about your ideas, when you talk about your concept, when you're saying something to somebody, they need to receive exactly the way you're talking about as well. Because they don't think it's a cup of coffee when you talk to them. They think it's a tea. Why? Right? They receive very differently. To have any sort of agreement about product or service, we need to agree that this product and service is exactly the same what you're seeing it as well. Both the parties, right? A frame is a simple perspective. Nothing else. It's just the way you look at things. You're holding a frame. If I talk about a photo frame, you've been holding this frame and you're walking around with that frame. Framing is the view of the world, your perspective of the world, right? You're looking at stuff, right? That's what it is. Looking out different windows, different perspective, resulting at different emotions. If somebody's holding a different kind of frame, they have a different emotion attached to that. If you're holding a tiny frame and I'm holding a bigger frame, it does not mean that I have a bigger perspective about life. It's just a different frame. You see things differently than I do. For us to win anything, the frame need to be exactly the same. Yeah? People have a look, sorry, people have to look at the deal, at the same deal from the same window. This is what I just said, right? We all have to look at the same deal from the same window so that we have a same perspective, same view, right? When I said coffee, we all look at the coffee from the same window. We don't say this is a tea or this is a, you know, not a coffee, this is something else, this is a poison, we don't say that. We all agree when you buy stuff, this is the coffee, this is the coffee, we're all looking at the coffee from a same perspective. But the taste of the coffee might change. Does it make sense? When I consume the product, then I'm looking at from different perspective. You're looking at from different perspective, right? When we taste it. But by looking at it, it's just the same thing. Does it make sense? Yeah, right? True. Frame control is about getting people to see your higher differential service and a high value worth the high price by seeing through the same window. That's what the frame control is. Means that you're controlling their frame so that they can see that what you offering is a higher price and higher value what you're offering. You're controlling their frame. You control their perspective. They don't know that, but you control it. Does it make sense? You controlling their point of view. It seems pretty fucking freak, freaky. Right? Ah, we'll talk. Frame control is giving someone a lens to see. So now you're giving somebody a lens to see. You controlling it, you're giving somebody your lens to see it. In physical sense, we're providing a frame for you to see stuff. But in, in this way, when we speak to people, you use the words, they use the conversation, you use different techniques to make that happen. And we'll talk about those techniques. A buyer's frame is that he usually think that money, his money is the most important thing in the world and he controls it. That's buyer's frame. you right. The person who comes to buy something from you he thinks that his money is the most important thing, right? And he controls that frame. No one wants to come to a meeting to talk about themselves. They want to learn things. They go, they do not know. This is just me sort of saying, nobody wants to come into the meeting to talk about themselves. They want to learn what, what this meeting is. So we're talking about in a meeting sense, in a meeting places. But understand the second last point, a buyer's frame. So this is the buyer, right? If you are the buyer, you think when you're going to buy a car, when you're going to do something, when you're spending your money, you have a way of looking at that my money is a possession. 
that if I pay, I have a frame control. I control that. When should I give? But the person who is a salesman, the person who is on the other side, if he understands that, that money is the most important thing, how can I make that irrelevant? How can I make money irrelevant in that, you know, when I make money irrelevant in that, you know, step, then you don't have any excuse. This is talking about the values. This is talking about the belief for the people. If the buyer is coming to me and he's saying to me that money is the most important thing for me, and I know that when he's coming to me in any form, this is a buyer's, you know, for anything. And if I make money irrelevant by speaking or doing something differently, then money is irrelevant, right, in that space. I can make that happen, and I'll show you how. Right? Money becomes irrelevant when I provide the value. So when it's really relevant, there is no excuse. And the person does not control the frame. One and most important thing, remember that we've been given this word 100 times in any place we go in. The person who asks questions controls the conversation. I've been told so many times. Let me give you another phrase for that. The person who controls the frame controls any setting, any social setting, anything. Person who controls the frame controls everything. Not the questions, the frame. You need to learn to control the frame. And the funny thing is, and the good thing is, the more you understand this, the more you practice this, the better you get at it. Initially, it's going to be really funny because you start to look at people, their perspectives, the, what they talk about, what they're saying. You're not going to be, you're not going to be in the part. You're not going to be participating it. You're going to be observer. Why well, we talked about it yesterday. You're going to be observer. You're not going to be in that. You're going to be out. When you're out, you can see the frames. What frame do I need to wear to actually kill his frame? So you're going to start looking at that because we want you to be observer, not participant in that space. All right? So this is a presenter's problem. If you are talking to somebody and you're presenting at somebody, this is a presenter's problem. Control the energy of the room, control the frames of the room. So we all talk about it as presenter, right? If you're presenting at somebody or somewhere, whether it's a meeting, whether it's somewhere you're talking to people, you're presenting it, right? you're presenting it. What we need to do as a presenter, I believe in energy, that's why I put it there. I said you control the energy of the room. When I see the energy going down in the room, I usually say, take a break, guys. Take a step out. Let's do something. Right? You probably have noticed that. Right? I control the frame in the room. I make sure that frame is always on me. On me. Frame is always on me. Right? Frame is always on me. The reason for that is the person who controls the frame, controls the setting. Control the setting. Right? So you remember that. Remember that. Remember that. As I said, <laughs> look, um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be, who like being honest, right? I'm sharing the back end stuff today, right? Today is the back end stuff. So I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be telling you exactly what I do to you so that you can learn that. You do it to others, right? So, okay. And I truly believe that you guys are going to be using in an ethical way, right? This is some secret <laughs> stuff. I'm not, uh, I'm not teaching you how to hypnotize people. I'm not teaching in that. What, what I'm saying is, if you are in space, you want to win the conversation, you want to win the meetings, you want to win the sale contract, you need to understand that. Right? If you want to win a fight with your wife, you need to understand that. <laughs> you never you win any? a fight with your wife. <laughs> I failed. I failed. <laughs> My wife collapses all my frame. frame. Yeah, she controls. The, the, I'll talk about it. That's called. That's called. Uh, give you an example, right? And that 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 you might resonate with that example. We have a thing called territorial advantage, right? Say, for example, I'm the best surgeon in the world, and when I walk into some space, I'm the best surgeon in the world, and I charge about. Say ten thousand dollar. I'm a plastic surgeon, right? I'm, I'm people like Kim Kardashian. All these guys come to me, and I'm charging say fifty thousand dollars if you come and see me. I've got the freaking big frame, right? I've got the right. I'm nobody can talk to me like that. I'm the big guy, right? If you want to come to me, I've got the biggest thing. So even people like Kim Kardashian, people with a lot of money, they come and sit next to me and ask me for advice. 
yeah, if I'm the guy. But now see what happens in this space. I am the guy who the big in what I do in, as, a social, as a surgeon. I want to learn golf. And I decide I want to learn a golf or I want to learn tennis. I want to learn cricket. I want to learn that stuff. And I called somebody. I said, this is a golf course in a Century Lake here. Guys, do you have somebody who can teach me golf? And they said, yeah, yeah, we got a guy who is 28 year old. He played golf with Greg Nome, all the guys. And he's 28 year old. And I'm like 60, right? I'm, I'm the guy who for everything. I've got done everything. I've got the millions in my bank account. I've got the biggest frame ever. So this guy who's 28 year old, and he's the guy who played with Greg Norman, he's a pretty good uh, golf player, he's, he's done all that sort of work with, with him. So the morning happens, I pick up my Ferrari, I drive to that uh, Century Lake golf course, I take out my caddy, I take out my all that stuff, walk into the Century Lake golf course, and I'm walking in there, the guy who is um, 28 year old, he's a trainer, he goes, hey Jack, thanks for coming in man, just wait for two minutes, I'll be out there. And I'm standing outside, hmm. Okay, cool. And he said, he brings his buggy and all that sort of stuff and takes me to the golf course. And he goes, all right, now we're practicing. And I'm, I'm like, you know, the guy who can do anything. I'm trying to do it. He goes, no, 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 no. That's not right. You're not doing it right. Put your feet on the other side. Do this, do that, do that, do that, do that, do that, do that. And I'm like, but I know the guy, man. I'm the guy. I did everything. I've got millions in my bank account. I've came here on a Ferrari. How the hell you can teach me? How the hell you talk to me like that? Now think of that is that guy who has nothing in his bank account, he's only 28 year old, he can say and do anything to me and I'll listen to him. He said, no, nah, you're not doing it right. Your shoes are dirty. You shouldn't be wearing these shoes next time on this place. We don't allow people to wear these kind of shoes as central legs. I've got to listen to him, right? I won't go there. If I want to go there, I have to listen to him. So that's why we call the advantage of the territory advantage. My wife's got that. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Yeah. Did you understand that? Yeah, that's a territory frame. Right? When people have that advantage, you can't win that. Doesn't matter what you do. Cool? Ah. Let's talk about neuroscience. This is the neuroscience behind any winning you do any presentation you, any talking you do, this is a neuro. You set the frame, you tell your story, you talk about the uh, intrigue stuff, what do you do, and you offer the prize, and you nail the hook, and you get the deal. Let me explain you, to you guys in a context where I've tried this. I've tried this in the presentation you came in. Right? You came in the first presentation where you bought this. Right? So this was all the, there. When you came into the presentation, you bought this. This all um, was tried on you. Right? What did I do when you came into the meeting or the, came into the uh, workshop for the first time? I set the preview or set the frame. My frame setting was, and this is my frame setting by words I used. I said, guys. I'm not the guy who is good at everything. I'm not the guy who is good at I don't have your experience. I don't have your experience. I don't have your experience. I don't have your experiences. I don't have your background. But I'm good at what I do. All right? That was my frame setting. Did you get it? What it meant is, if people had their guards on at the time, and I'll show you how the works, brain works, People had their guards on at the time. They were thinking, I know everything anyway. What is this guy going to teach me? Right? I'm, I came here on a Ferrari. I'm the richest guy here. What he's going to teach me? Right? The moment I said, you are good at what you do, but I'm gonna, not going to teach you what you're good at, but I'm only going to teach you this. Mm -hmm. Right? The guards are down. I set the frame. And I did a few other things along the way as well. But I don't, I'm not the only one who does it. I'm not the only one who does it. If you go into any event of these big people, name anybody, they all do that. They all do that. They all do that. 
watch and watch Barack Obama's speech. Watch the guy who was uh, Secretary of State. What's her name? Uh, Condoleezza Rice. Watch her speech. She does it. When I watched that, I was like, holy crap. They all do that. They all do that. They set the frame. Different language, different tones, different way of doing things, but they set the frame. The frame setting in that context is they want to make sure that their frame is always the higher frame. And they set the frame. When we talk about rules, you remember that setting the rules? That in technical terms, you're setting the frame when you talk to people in the first meeting. Rules comes later. The steps comes later. Contracts comes later. When we have a first meeting, that's the framing first. You need to frame it things first so that they understand what you're going to be talking in the future. Fine. So you must set a frame. You must tell your story. Let's go back to this quickly. Let me explain this first, then I can actually talk about this. Let's understand the brain first. When I say tell a story, any place you go in, your brain has three things. And for us to be part of anything, we need this first thing called dopamine. Right? Dopamine you get by drugs, by cigarette, uh, by listening to a lot of motivational CDs, you, uh, anything which excites you, dopamine hit is important. People get addicted to dopamine. When I was telling you my story, I told you my story for two hours. Yesterday when you came for the first time, I told you story again. That was a different story. I talked about totally different stuff. Right? When you tell people stories, in the social context, when you're talking to people, when you're speaking to people, when you tell stories, people stay motivated, they stay alert. That's what dopamine does. You know that when you drink uh, V drink or Red Bull, what they do is they increase the dopamine in your body. This is the chemical in your brain, looks like this, HO, HO, this, this is the chemical sort of. Uh, rule that's the the way the dopamine hit works right so your first if you want keep people in the room to be stay awake they you want them to be interactive you want them to stay motivated and alert you need to increase their dopamine the best way to increase dopamine is tell them the story tell them the story tell them the story if you tell them the story in a way that where they're looking to do that, they, sorry, where they, they find it exciting. You can't just tell a boring story. You need to be like a really exciting way of telling. You need to be a good storyteller. That's why I told that story first when you came in. Yesterday when you came in for the first time, I told you the story. Again, I told you the story, right? Story, story, story. You need to learn to tell the story because you want that dopamine hit because people need to stay motivated. People need to stay alert. You don't want that if people to sleep. The other one is oxytocin. What it does is, it actually build trust and faith. You want two things from your client. You want them to listen to you. The other thing is, they want, you want them to trust you. You want them to trust you. If you want clients to learn and understand you and trust you what you're saying, you need to tell story in a way that they all listen to you the way you're listening to me right now. Yeah? Before I sold you this program, what I was doing? Just before making that workshop, the first month, you told the story. Yeah. Your family and uh, yeah. uh, your uncle. Yes, that was at the end. Yeah, that was at the end. And how did I tell the story? Um, we sat down. Yes. I exactly remember how it was. We all sat down and it just came in. Yeah. So I was just trying to find the relevance. But yeah, yeah it just came in and it was an emotionally yeah. touching story. Yeah. And I'm not saying story. Was, no, no, no. no, no. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, the yeah. school story, yeah? Yeah, yeah. You yeah. remember that, right? Yeah, you were saying oh, that. Yeah. 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 And then. Remember that? So, end of. Yeah. 
So what it meant is, uh, now I'm talking neuroscience here, right? The stories are good, and I told you the story, and they're real stories. Everything is real, right? There's nothing sort of, they were real stories. But the good thing about those stories is I understand the neuroscience behind it. Means that I need to know when to tell what to tell. So the reason I told you that story at the end, so that you can build your trust with me. You can trust me. So if you want to build, if you want to increase this new thing called oxytocin in people's mind, you need to tell a story in a way that people can listen and trust you. If people don't trust you, they don't do business with you. Trust is the most important thing. You need to build a trust. How do they get the trust? With oxytocin. You can't drug them physically, so please don't try that. <laughs> don't go and get a tablet and give it to them. I'll find oxytocin tablets and give it put to people. Yeah, put in the water. Don't do that. <laughs> don't give them oxytocin tablets or inject them with something. You can do that by doing this. Sit down and sell an intriguing story to build a trust. I'm giving a back and stuff. You need to tell a story which is intriguing, which builds the trust. You need to sit down. It's a calm. The tone, if you understand the tonality of that. Before that, I was speaking. My hands were going like this. And then when I was sitting down, I was sitting down like this. This is how I was telling the story. Right? That's the, your neuroscience at the back end of your mind, even though consciously you don't know that, started to trust me. Do you also want to like say, trust me? No. No. You don't say that. Trust me. No, no, no. That's, that's a salesy. You don't yeah. talk to the conscious. You talk to subconscious. As I said, most of the things we do, they are all are unconscious. So I talk to the unconscious mind. I learn the techniques to speak to your unconscious, which you don't even know that I'm speaking. Interesting, you mentioned the salesy thing. I showed um, my brother and some family members videos after I signed up, and probably the first thing my brother said is quite intelligent. He's like straight away. The good thing is he doesn't sound salesy straight up. And I said, yeah. Yeah, you know why? Because I didn't sell you stuff. I didn't say trust yeah. me, buy this. Yeah. The reason is because I understand the neuroscience behind it. When you understand the neuroscience, and this became my obsession, right? I don't want to be salesy. I'm not a salesy guy. I hate somebody coming and selling to me. But one, one thing I found, and I found it really interesting. When the, other than getting married, when are you the happiest in your life? <laughs> where are you going? I was going to say, hold on. Where, where are you going with this? <laughs> Uh, like yeah. every other youth, every other young. No, no, no. <laughs> like I think, no, no. Have you seen something? Yeah. When, when look, I think no. Yeah. The, if you look at it, if you look <laughs> at it in a way that uh, yeah, if you want to have this continuous hit of dopamine every other day, what we do as humans is we go and buy stuff. Yeah. yeah. Right. Please. We're pretty happy when you buy. Like you, why you want to buy a car? We happy. Right? I'm happy. Why you want to buy? For men, there's only a couple of things. You only can buy a car, you can buy a house. You know, there's nothing, not that many. But girls know that even buying a shoes give them pretty same dopamine as we men give us the car, right? Yes. We don't need to spend 200000 to get a car. <laughs> girls are pretty happy with $200 shoes. They, they're good with that, right? They understand the dopamine hit. But think of that is now my mind says, and this is my mind, right? As humans, when we want to buy stuff, and we feel happy about it. Why don't we feel happy when we're buying something else, right? Mm -hmm. Like, why salesy has to be there? Because people have, feel happy anyway, right? They want to buy stuff. Why do I need to sell them? Let them buy it. Let me out of this and let them buy it. When people buy it, they're happy. They tell other people that they bought it. Yeah? You understand the difference? People love to buy. Remember that. Your clients love to buy. Everybody love to buy. You don't need to sell them. You need to put a social setting in a way. You need to control the frame so that they can buy. You don't need to sell. Don't sell. Let them buy.
Yeah, because they're going to feel happy about it. They're going to tell other people about it as well. If you sell them, the thing that they started to call it in the sales books is all the time. It's called buyer's remorse. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, buyer's remorse. If they buy it, they don't have any remorse, man. They let them buy it. Yeah, you remove yourself out of that. If you understand this, then you understand how they buy it as well. Everybody buy emotionally. They don't buy cons consciously, like, you know, they don't know that. They're buying it. They, everybody buy emotionally with their unconscious mind. And they bring in the conscious mind later down the track to justify it. You buy Ferrari because you want to buy it. Your unconscious mind wants to buy it. Later down the track, you want to justify it, saying, I need it. I want it to. You consciously justify it. You consciously try to justify it later. Right? Yeah. Cool. That's good. At least we all agree, huh? Yeah. Do you, do you feel like, um, not in the public setting, for example, if you're on a one-on-one -on meeting, yes. how do you deliver this? Oh, that is pretty amazing, man. That, that's the one-on-one -on -one meeting. I think, say, let's, let's look at the example, right? When you are with somebody and do a, you are in a one-on-one setting, right? And let me explain this different kind of frame, then we'll talk one-on-one. -on -one. Is it Okay. I'll give you the answer, but let's talk about one, sorry, let's talk about different kind of frames because when you are a one-on-one -on -one setting, you want to see what frame they're wearing. Mm -hmm. I think just like, you know, I don't want to jump into the between question, yeah. but at the same time, can we just, like when you're on the phone as well, because we at these days use a lot of phone, right? We don't spend so much time on the one-on-one -on -one usually. So how does it, does that change? Like, no. the, because the storytelling, you sit down and all sort of things. So can you just like maybe... Yeah, so I'm going to explain that. There is a different... So this is the overall picture of that, right? Bigger picture. So is that a step-by-step? Step? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll show you a step. You first have to give talk to me? No, no. So, give, so let's, let's talk about it different... Hang on, hang on. Let's, uh, let's go back. Let's go back. <laughs> no, yeah. I have the same question. Like, do you have to do it in disorder or like... Okay. No, the same injection. It's yeah. just got it. The syringes are uh, the first part of it. Sorry. Uh, did I tell you uh, I'm going to sell you a program tomorrow and that program is going to have injections coming in as part of that? <laughs> did, are you using the boxes you bought? Yeah. Want? Yeah. So I'm going to give you that as part of that. <laughs> it's going to be using them. Yeah. So I'm going to give you that box. And I'm saying, guys, take this, any social setting, just inject it in the water and give it to them. Awesome. You have the package. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm doing it with you. <laughs> that's my expert's plan. Right? All right. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, let's look at it, guys. That's it. So before we get into more into this, I wanted to explain the back end of that, right? Back end of that, people need two things. Remember that. We're not talking about sequence here. We're talking about brain, right, first. The brain says, I need to trust you, right? I need to trust you. I need oxytocin. Mm -hmm. So the way you can build oxytocin is tell your story integrally. Like, you know, night sitting down, tell your story. So if you don't have, if you're doing it over the phone, try that doing it sitting down and standing up while you're talking to somebody, right? Let me clear, finish this, then I'll answer questions, right? That's the first. The second thing is you need people to be alert and motivated while they're listening to you. You need dopamine. You need dopamine in there, right? And this is what we're talking about when you speak to people, when you train people, when you, you know, doing trainings and stuff, when you're running your education sessions, when you're at that level. But when we talk about meetings and stuff, I'll explain what you need to do at the meetings, at the public setting, because in public setting where the interaction is only for like two minutes, you don't have a time to do hit the dopamine, right? You don't have a time to do all that sort of stuff, right? How that the first, for you to actually understand it, how you can change it, firstly, you need to understand what are they, right? What are type of frames people wear? What are they? What the way the brain works? But let me look at, firstly, show you guys this picture. This picture explains pretty much most of the stuff. A picture says that when you speak to somebody in a social setting or in a meeting, all your idea, brain has got a three types, or oh, sorry, three areas of brain. One is a croc brain, which is our two million dollar brain, which hasn't changed. It's a two million year old brain, which we still carry with us every place we own. Okay. Wherever you walk in, you carry a croc brain with you. What are you actually pitching to? You're speaking to. So there is a midbrain, there's a in, in our brain, which developed about 
don't know, 100,000, 20,000 years ago. And there is a new brain which we develop as humans came in called neocortex. It is the place where all the excitement comes from. Where you, when you get excited, when you are passionate, the passion, the excitement, um, you love something, you know, you love doing it. Uh, passion for cryptocurrency, passion for blockchain, passion for that, passion for this, passion for coffee, passion for cricket. All that passion, all the liking stuff comes from the middle brain, right? That right tiny brain in the middle. That, that's right. So what happens is when you go and speak to somebody, when you go and talk to somebody, the idea is coming from your neocortex. And you're speaking to somebody that's not received by their neocortex. That's received by their clock brain. Right? So when you speak to somebody, you are excited and you're saying to that, that guys, I want to go, I have an idea. This is you. And you're going to talk to people who are sitting here. And when you talk to people, it, this idea is calling in your neos coming from and going into its clock brain. So now think of that is you're sending a signal from this and it's going into the, his crock brain. What does crock brain do? Crock brain has got a weird way of looking stuff. Crock brain thinks differently than your neocortex brain does. Right? Crock brain is not excited, not at all. It's not passionate. Crock brain has no passion. That's why when you speak to people, you're like, I'm so passionate. Why can't you see it? I love this idea. Why you don't love it? What the hell is going on? It's because their crock brain is receiving it. Right? When you come from work and you're so passionate, you said, oh, I had a beautiful day today. I win or I won $100 or $100,000 contract today. And your wife goes, yeah, well, who cares? <laughs> uh, right? Yeah. That's, received by <laughs> that's received by her crock brain. Yeah. Huh? That's received by her crock brain. What if it's the other way around? Yeah, either way. The, yeah, it goes like, oh, well done, what's my share? <laughs> yeah, that's that's probably she's into it, right? She's into it, right? So that's that's good. So now think of that is, it's uh, think of the mechanics of how the brain works. How you talk, speak, and calculate come from the neocortex. When you sort of speak and you talk and you do all that with the passion, it comes from that. All come from your neocortex, which is a smart part of the brain, which is smart, right? You do all the calculation in that brain. When you meet somebody and start a conversation, the information is coming from neocortex is going to their croc, which is a lower brain which manages the information. The croc brain is wondering if the information is something it want to eat or kill. Yeah, that's what people thinking when you're telling them. That's why they ignore. Should I eat it or should I kill it? That's a croc brain comes in place, right? Only two, two binary options. Yeah, only two options. <laughs> yes, that's 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 why we call a croc brain. Right? So that, it's a crocodile. Part of the from, from yeah, so the way we've been designed in, in many, many years ago, right? We wanted survival. And I'll talk about it. Just, just give me two minutes, right? So you have to work your way upwards, past the croc brain into the midbrain before you earn the trust necessary to get into the neocortex. So your job and only job is to go past the croc brain. Right? You don't have a selling, selling job. You don't have any job in that space. If you put your effort, say that the only job today I have, when I get into this meeting, when I get into this interview call, when I get into this contract meeting, when I go into the sales call, when I sell something today in public, I just want to go past the croc brain. I don't want to do anything else. I'm just going to go past the croc brain. So what it means is featuring the benefits um, and the benefits cannot be understood by croc brain. So now it is very interesting. What we do. I did the same thing. I joined multi-level marketing in 2012 called Amway. Amway. Yeah. So that was in 2012, right? So I did it and I was looking for business opportunities. I said, okay, let's do that, man. I love it. I go to people and at the time I didn't understand this bit. So I go to people and explain them the features. And I was like, I'm telling you, it's so good. The features are there, man. Get it. They just rejected me. Why can't you see the features? And I tell them the benefits. They just didn't listen. They were not listening to benefits and the features I was telling. That's what we do as analytical brain. You think that if you tell somebody the features of your product, 
you're going to get more out of that. They're going to like you more. Right? We're trying to tell them the features of the benefits of the product you're selling. You don't tell any benefits or any features of your product at all. Because your one and only job is to go past the croc brain. And croc brain and midbrain don't understand the feature language. So stop wasting time telling people in the first meetings about your features of the products and stuff. No talking about the features and the products and the services and the benefits they're going to get. Huh? So what do you tell them? Slowly, slowly. Let's let's get to that. <laughs> let's get to that. Slowly. I know. That's what I do. Like. Once you have a good pitch, it should work for you. Tailor what you say and the way the brain works. So don't say stuff for the sake of saying it. Tailor it ba based on the way the brains work. Right? You understand their unconscious mind, how the brain works. But the good thing is, and let me give you the good news. The good news, the best news ever. All the humans are same. Yeah? What it means is you only do the pitch once. You don't need to redo it again and again. Right? You only do the pitch deck once. Whatever pitch you have, whatever you're going to sell, the way you're going to sell, you only do once because the humans are same. They don't change. You don't need to change your pitch deck for everything. Or presentation. Rock bands and comedians do not change their shows based on where they are performing. There you go. They tell you the same joke at the same time at the same scene every time. If you go in New York, if you go in LA, the same scene, same thing every time, all the time. Right? They do the same reason. They know that what is behind the scene. They know that how humans receive the information. Walk into Tony Robbins UPW. Ernie story he's been telling from last 20 years. There's a story he tells about a Ernie, the don donkey, a tiny horse. He sat on the horse and he did that. Remember the story? Yeah. He tells this same story and he's been telling from last 25 years at the same UPW. You go there, you listen to the same story again and again. Why? Because he knows it works. Why he tells the stories? He knows that it works. Yeah, what we do as human, oh no, no, we already told four times or five times, I'm going to change it now. Sure. Now, nah. same story, same thing, again and again, again and again, again and again. Sure. It works. It's not for you, it's for the other people. It's the audience yeah, yeah, cool. All right, now look at it. This is the croc brain, this is how it works. Croc brain works is, if it's dangerous, ignore it. If it's not new and exciting, ignore it. If it's not new and exciting, ignore it. Yeah, if it's not dangerous, ignore it. Yeah, if it's not dangerous, means the croc brain is, they were trying to look for danger, right? If it's not dangerous, I'm not going to get killed or anything is going to happen, ignore it. That's croc brain thinking at the back. How can I ignore this or kill it or, you know, run away from it? And then it's saying, if it's not new and exciting, if I already know this information, if I already have this information, how can I ignore this? So what it means is, put it the other way around, guys. Put it the other way around. You need to put a pain in there. You have to add danger into it. Yeah? You have to add new and exciting into it. I'm, I'm telling you the other way around. Now look at the other way around. You need to add your brain into it. <laughs> right? Add the other way around. If it's new... If it's new, summarize it as quickly as possible and forget about it. Details and finally there is a specific instruction. Do not, do not, do not send anything to neocortex for problem solving unless you have a situation that is really unexpected and out of ordinary. So croc brain is standing as a guard at the door. I'm not going to let anybody in today unless it's a new and exciting and it's a dangerous and it not need a problem solving because new cortex is the guy at the back who solves problems. He's a smart brain. He's the guy who knows everything, but I'm the doorkeeper. 
for me, for you to pass through this crocodile brain, you need to send me something new and exciting. And it has to be short. It has, doesn't have to be detailed. Short and precise. And it has to be a problem. It has to be dangerous. When the things happen like this, I go away and I said, guys, can you please solve the problem? So when the interest comes, when you like people, when you listening, people are listening to you, when they want to do something, the way you're doing it to me right now, I know that it's not a crock brain today. So just, just hit me just like that. Yeah. I'm building a I'm building a pitch deck. At the moment, I use the Sequoia Capital template. The first page, what it says, summarize your project in 50 words or less. <laughs> yeah. This is. Summarize 50. Man. Imagine an ICO project summarizing. 50 words yeah. or less. That's the first page. Why? For them to select whether this one is going to work. Is that uh, from Oxford? No, from, no, from Sequoia Capital. Yeah, why? You know that. They've gone through this. They are a tier one v v venture capital yeah. in China. And that's their first page of their VC, the internal like internal yeah, yeah, yeah. evaluation process. It's first page to see whether in 50 words this project is worth looking at. Or not. Yeah. yeah, so... Right. If they're not, bang. Yeah. yeah, you know why? So, I'm not... This information which you're talking about yeah. is available for people who are at Oxford's or MIT's and all that. Mm. They are have this information. Deloitte's, you go in there, IBM's execs. Yeah. They have yeah. that. Tomorrow, you at IBM, look at senior CEO's pitch and he's selling something, he'll have these characteristics, all that. Because they know that they've been taught. We haven't been taught. We haven't been. I had to go and learn it. Right? I know this is what people do. I know how the neuroscience works now. So your job and your, sorry, let's go through. Your job and only job is, that's what I said earlier. This is your job is. There is two questions we always ask ourselves after we made a presentation. Did I get through? Was my message well received? Did I get through the crocodile brain? Was my message well received? Or do I need to do anything else? So now look at it. Difference between you guys who understand this and the difference between salespeople. When the salespeople we talk, salespeople's only goal is to make conversion and sell. Your job is not that at all. Your job is to have this. You want to make sure that have I gone through, have I gone past the crocodile brain? <laughs> your job is that. And your job is to, well, my message was well received on this side or not? Because your end goal is you want to go and speak to the new cortex. You want to speak to that side of smart brain, which understand, because when you're speaking to somebody, when you're talking to somebody about your idea, it's coming from there, coming from your new cortex. Right? So give you an example. What happened with me last year? And I started this cryptocurrency certification program. This was my first step towards the education industry. I came to the education industry coming from a consulting background, right? That's my consulting. I'd worked for corporates for many, many years. And I came into the consulting background. Sorry, come, come into this education world. And I'm, what does education world people do or think? That I have to teach. Right? I'm a teacher now. I, I became a teacher. And I started teaching people. And I started teaching people. So my first workshop where I taught people about Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, and I said, this is what's happening globally, guys. Like my present, if you have a look at it, uh, my presentation called, what is Bitcoin, what, sorry, Bitcoin, sorry, blockchain and, and why it matters today, something like that. That presentation, I give it to a lot of people. That talk about the history, where you come from and all that, right? And I talked about that presentation. And I gone into that presentation, which is pretty straightforward presentation. And I did that presentation, and at the end, I was selling stuff. Right? And I said, guys, you want to work into my course and come in and learn from me? And everybody was saying no. And you know what I was getting? It was like um, uh, everybody coming to me at the end saying, Jack, thank you. That was very good information. Thank you for giving me the information. And uh, I said, why don't you come and join the course? He said, no, 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 I don't want to do the course. Thank you. So they liked what I said. And, but they didn't do it. And I was at the same kind of situation where you might have felt in your life 
where you are best friend with a girl, but she's not your girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, friend zone, right? And this is the best, worst place to be. You don't want to be in a friend zone. You don't want to be in a friend zone in that space. Because what happens is, when you're in a friend zone, people like you, they just like you, but they don't buy from you. You don't want people to like you. You want people to admire you and buy from you, right? <laughs> Liking is not going to do anything. Does it make sense? Yeah, yeah. Don't friend zone me, please. I'm not a friend. Remember? Don't friend zone me. <laughs> I'm not in that space. Right? Yeah. So I had the same feeling. I was like, ah, what's going on? Something big is missing. I'm supposed to be teaching people. Now I'm teaching people why nobody's buying from me. Then I realized, then I realized I don't need to teach people. And most of us are doing the same thing. We're teaching people. Right? You teach people the way I'm teaching you guys. I'm only teaching because you have paid for, you're part of the, you know, that. That's why I'm doing the teaching. But when you met me for the first time, I wasn't teaching. You probably have thought I was teaching, but I was doing this. Just a sales pitch. Yeah, you can call it a sales pitch, you can call it presentation, you can call it anything, you name it, but I wasn't teaching. Right? I was not teaching. The reason I wasn't teaching is because if I taught you at the time, you wouldn't have bought it from me. Right? And I don't want to be in that friend zone in that space because if you had bought it from me or didn't buy it from me, you would have known this stuff, what I'm teaching today. Right? So it's not justification for you as well because you would have stayed away from this big information which I was going to share. Right? As a human, you need to understand how the subconscious mind works, how the neuroscience works. If you don't understand it, you're going to be trying to sell people, trying to get into the people. You know, when somebody gets into the multi-level for the first time, they're so excited. They just want to sell to their friends. They go out there, I am into this, buy from me, buy from me, buy from me. And they annoy the hell out of people. Why they annoy the hell out of people? Because they don't understand it. I mean, I did the same thing. You know, I got a no, like I didn't know how to sell to people. I wasn't trained. So when I was speaking to people, people, people didn't like it. Nobody wants to be sold to. People love to buy. People love to buy, but nobody wants to be sold to. So I had to understand it. How do I sell but not sell? <clears throat> so this is a method I found which works 100%. So let's look at this. Pitches are sent from modern and smart part of the brain, the neurocortex, right? When I'm sending pitch, I'm sending like this. It's in my smart brain sending the pitch to you, sitting there for the first time. But they are received by a part of the brain that is 5 million years old. And what it says, boring, ignore it. The moment I became boring, you guys are going to ignore it straight away. Dangerous, run and fight. Complicated, radically summarize it and passes in the truncated form. So just send me in a short form. So that's where the problem comes is, right? When your smart brain's talking, their smart brain's not listening. That's where the disconnect is. That's where the biggest disconnect is. Now look at this. This is a solution. Only way our presentation stands any chance whatsoever because the crocodile brain wants information in certain ways. Simple, clear, non-threatening, and above all, intriguing and novel. You need to communicate in these ways or you will never going to capture people's attention. So it has to be intriguing, has to be something which is future-based. One of the biggest things, and I, when I say people at a higher capacity like presidents and all that, at the election, like whether it's uh, you know, our Australian election or the American election, they all use this. So. They did a survey and they said in American election that people the, uh, you know, who won last, I don't know, 15 or 10 American elections uh, for our American president, they look at that, those guys, and say how they presented to people and how their presentation was to the, to the, commu uh, to the people. So what they did is they rated their uh, method of communication. Their method of communication was exactly the way you would speak to four-year-old kid, right? That was for Trump. 
Trump, right? Four-year-old kid. So it means that when he was speaking, his speeches were designed. They were so simple and so clear, they were for four-year-old kid. Hillary Clinton on the other side was for eight and nine-year-old. Really. Yeah. So they were, her speeches were designed like that. So eight and nine-year-old, and his was four-year-old kid. So that's how he was saying. So what it means is, it was simple and clear, very simple and clear. Was it intriguing and noble? Make America great again. Was noble, was intriguing. How can you make America great again? What do you got? Yeah, yeah like something, right? So he had that thing in there. He was giving the information with novelty in that and had all the intriguing information in there. When you have that intriguing information, people listen. So he wasn't talking to their crock brain. Hillary Clinton was talking to their crock brain. Crock brain, when it receives it, rejects it. So you got to talk like this. Does this work in corporate environment also? Man, humans, where there is, if you're talking to humans, yeah. it works everywhere. It works everywhere. So let's look at it. So what the crock brain does, going to ignore if possible, only focus on a big picture, emotional, focused on hair and, or not, this is, let's talk about this, framing. When you own the frame, you win the game. When you own the frame, you win the game. Every meeting, pitch and presentation in a social encounter that is governed by frames. Frames are a point of view, perspective, frames don't combine, they mix and they collide. The strong frame always wins. The strongest frame always wins. What it means is, when you go and meet, you think that two or three frames, you're talking to people. When you go in a social gathering for the first time, and I'll sort of give you a typical example. When, the, when you meet somebody, you say, hey, how are you? Good, thank you. How are you? Very good. What do you do? Nothing. Then this person is standing here. What do you do? I work for IBM uh, as an executive. I have this. I have that. All oh, right, where do you live? Uh, I live in Baldwin. Oh, cool. Okay, that's good. And on this guy, what do you do? Oh, I, I do cleaning. Uh, okay. Uh, where does you live? I live in Footscray. Yeah, okay, cool, cool. That's good. So what happens is, in this ses sort of settings, so the person who's sitting, standing here, he works for IBM, and he lives in Baldwin. Uh, my, the guy who's standing there, he sort of, had his perception and the frame assumed straight away. He said, this guy is rich. This guy is famous. He does all that, right? He lives in Baldwin. He works for the company. Pretty cool. And what do I have? I have pretty much live in Footscray. I do a cleaning job. Nothing at all, right, in that space. So he makes up his mind in that time, in that frame, that I have to listen to this guy. This frame wins. And I talk about different kind of frames. Right? This frame, and we do that all the time unconsciously. The reason people talk about that, because they have, let's talk about this very quickly. There's a different types of the frame, right? Different types, and you're going to meet different types at different social settings and different meetings. And I'm only going to talk about the frames you're going to meet at corporate and social settings. Right? They're different frames, so you guys understand. These are the only you're going to meet. There are a few others. But these are the only you're going to meet at corporates, at the presentations, at the social settings, and they're the biggest ones. The biggest one ever, when I talked about this example, is called ego frame. That's an ego frame. The people who live in ego world. I'm the guy, listen to me. I'm the guy. I've got everything. I drive Ferraris. I have live in. I've got Omega. They tell you. Um, I don't think so I can make it. They're showing you the... <laughs> right? Yeah. Right? Yeah, I'm yeah. Right? I don't think so I can make it, right? What it means is showing you indirectly, right? Watch my Omega, right? I've got this. I've got sorted, man. Listen to me. Right? So the reason they do it is they, they wear that ego frame. You can understand the people, right? All people, right? Humans. And there is, you can break the frame very easily. It's, it's, yeah. it's very easy, but you got to understand it, what they're wearing first. But now when you people, it's going to happen like this, right? Now you're in a social setting, you're standing here like this. Somebody comes to you and they start talking to you and uh, you're listening to them. You're like, 
and he started telling about himself, ego, like, you know, all that. Like, hmm. I know what frame you're wearing. Don't worry. I've got the solution. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be like this, right? So it'll be like very funny. You'll see. It'll be very funny. So what is ego frame, right? Ego frame is the most common opposite frame you will ever encounter in business settings or in the social settings. The ego frame comes from an individual who has a massive ego as standard. His power is rooted in his status and a status derived from a fact that others give this person honor and respect. That's what his status is. Other people give him respect and honor. You will know that you are facing this power frame when you encounter arrogance, lack of interest, or vibe conveying that I'm more important than you. Kind of rudeness. Right? And it's like an imperial behavior. I'm the king. I'm the king. But some people do it without even knowing they're doing it. It's just... They don't know that. Yeah. No, I mean, not everybody... You're the, probably few people now in Melbourne know this kind of stuff, yes. right? Not everybody knows this. They don't know that. People who are doing like those they don't know that. Ego frame, they don't think they're doing it. They're nah. just inbuilt into that. Oh, yeah. That's unconscious. All behavior are unconscious. 90% of the small, like, small medium business owners like that. Yeah. So, I'm oh, gonna, yeah. so you need to now learn is how to break that frame. Right. Just so they get paid for their egos. Yeah, so. yeah. So they are the most valuable or vulnerable to your power busting frame because they do not expect it. So when I say power busting frame, then they don't expect it. They have no idea how you can do it. They think that we are the king of the world. You don't have anything which you're going to help me with, right? Nothing at all. Uh, when you approach an opposite frame, opposing frame, sorry, you first and the most important objective is to avoid falling into the other person's frame by reacting to it, right? So this is the main one. The moment you start to Obey, the moment you start to comply with their way of doing it, you are following their frame. So don't answer your question. No, 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 I didn't say I don't answer it. <laughs> when you react, <laughs> when you react what they say, you are part of their power frame. I'll give you a big example. And remember the other day I gave you an example uh, some of you guys were on the call and I think I gave you a little bit on that call. So that was the ego frame coming to me. So I go into a meeting and there was a meeting for uh, invited by a client. Mm -hmm. Knock into the door and the receptionist says, Jerry will be with you very soon. Please sit there. Have a take a seat. So what it means is the, any office you go in, any corporate environment you go in, the receptionist or the place near the reception, all those sort of places are the pitfall to obey mm -hmm. their frame, their way of the world. It's there like that. It's, that's the way it is. So the question is how you can get out of that, right? Because when you're there, so what I was doing, I was sitting there and I was sitting there thinking that I am now reacting based on what they're going to say to me because I am part of their frame. So the girl has no idea. The client has no idea what is framing. Nothing at all. I understand that. moment I became reactive to their frame, I have to obey what they say. She said to me already, go ahead, take a seat. He'll be with you very soon. So what happened is the way you bust the ego frame, the way you do it is, kill this ego frame is, the collision happen, you have to give a bit of shock. Not in a wrong way, but in a right way. I'll tell you what I did as well. But not unfriendly act, but use it in a way that you have to give a bit of a shock to people. Not electric shock, but some sort of shock. Uh, so what happened is, when I was there, and I was sitting on a chair like this, and I know that he's in a meeting room there. So what I did is, I went in there. I said, sorry guys, Jerry, I really need to talk to you. I've only got five minutes. I can't wait more because I've got a meeting at 11.30. I'm going to leave very soon. If you can't make it, you want to reschedule. Next time you want to reschedule, please come to the city office. Thank you. Jack, I will be with you in two minutes. 
Did you understand the shock? They didn't expect that. Yeah. They thought that I'm just going to obey. Obey and a shock. That was, wasn't anything rude. I said, I have to leave, guys. I can't just sit there for you, waiting for you. Did you bypass the reception ask you to sit? Yeah, yeah, oh. you yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Did the reception say anything? No. Nah. She had no idea. I'm just going to get up and go in there and go there. If, say, think of that. I don't know where it's going to be. My reaction would... Did you would know Jerry at the time? No, no, no. Sorry. Let's, think, let's take a scenario where I don't know which room he's at. Yeah. Yeah. And the only thing I have is a receptionist. Yeah. So my next answer would be, I go up to the reception and say, can you please get him here in the next five minutes? If you can't get him in the next five minutes, I'm going to leave the building and you get him to call me. I'm not here to sit outside, just wait for him like that. Now after that, she'll be running around on her bum just to find him where the hell Jerry is so he can come out. Otherwise, I'm going to leave. That is only after the meeting time. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you're just sitting, so the, you have, they have to respect your time. When I say you have to give some sort of a shock, some sort of shock, not crazy shock, some sort of, say confidential John, say what happens is if you go in the meeting, this is what you can do it as well. You can take a document like this and you know that you're going to have ego frame coming to you, right? This is a document and it's coming to you like this. And you write it line company's name and say confidential name and stuff, right? This is how it is. And you put it on the table. You put it on the table there with everybody to see it, right? And you're presenting your idea and you're talking to people. And the power, the guy who is with the ego, the boss, he's going to sit like that, the way they should, you know, sit. And he's going to be like not interesting kind of thing. When you're trying to speak to that person, you know, like people like you come all the time. You know, I don't want to talk to you kind of thing. Ego, right? So you're trying to talk to people and you're trying to present it. He's got a few analytical guys sitting, MBAs sitting next to him, and he's the boss sitting there. And the boss, what are they going to do? You put in your paper there. The first thing they do when you're speaking, because when they're not interested, what they're going to be doing is they're going to pick up this. They're going to pick up this document, which you put in. You know that you're going to, you put it there. You have that. You planned it, right? Because you crafted your presentation. You're standing here, you're pitching, and he goes, uh -huh, not interested. Just trying to pick up. And you can say, sorry, John, not yet. Until I tell you when, right? Stay here. Stay here. Stay with me. Stay with me. So what's going to happen? Shit. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Yeah. Well, I can't open it? What? Not, not here yet. Okay? Stay with me. I'm just going to talk to you about something. Right? This is a mild shock. <laughs> mild shock. You need to give people mild shock. It's not that. It's, it's like in personal relations as well. Some people just kind of yeah. yeah. We we've been taught the wrong way around. Because I, I remember when I was doing uh, corporate sales. Yeah, yeah. Back, you know, I was doing corporate sales. I'm 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 sure you've been in the same shoes. You know, sometimes we're waiting for the C level executive customer. For oh, yeah, far you, out. You wait, and the the PA will say, you know, wait here. There's a couch in there, and you like as long as I've waited for seven hours for a client. Jesus. That's called trap. And, and he yeah. comes Don't get into a trap. And he comes out. He, he did this. Did okay. he do that? Yeah, he said, <laughs> he said, I have 15 minutes. Yeah. Make it quick. Yeah. And bang, you know, I start rushing it. Then he, took, he so, takes, takes the high ground. This is pretty cool. Yeah. This is perfect example. Yeah. This is now you're reacting to his frame. Yeah. Yeah. When you react to somebody else's frame, you lose your things. Yeah. Yeah. You do not want to react to other people's frame. So I'm only talking about ego frame right now. Let's go the other frames, right? Mm -hmm. Ego frame. So any question about ego frame, you need to give a mild shock or a humor in a funny way mm -hmm. to plant something. So certain things happen in a social settings. We know that all the time, right? We know that all the time. What things you can use to give them a mild shock? I think one example is um, last year, you know, Two years ago, when I first came to Australia, yep. I, I joined the company. I got pretty promoted pretty high up, and um, this uh, original management team they often try to ignore me. Mm -hmm. And then, um, then when I talk to them, they start playing on their phone mm -hmm. in a meeting. They yep. did that at the beginning. They didn't recognize me as, as an authority at the time. Yeah. So I did what you did, and then 
I just said straight away, I said, you know, if, if this is important, and I ask everybody to put your phone away, or otherwise let's do this meeting again. I want yep. everybody to attention. And the next meeting I went in, I, asked, I, I just put on PowerPoint everybody's phone on, on flat mode. Yeah. I just did that. And I think I think this is something I did I consciously, I didn't know about this. But this is something I Yeah. I so let's try some of the ideas, right? Mm -hmm. We all are we know that we're going to get this ego frame. We get it all the time. Now, give me an example where you encounter that ego frame. And let's try a way, collectively, come up with how you're going to break that frame. Give me an example where you had that ego frame in last one week. Where you had it. And let's see when it happens again, how you can actually bust it. Yeah, please. So for this um, smart business partner in yours. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah that's that's a ego frame. Yeah. yeah that's true. I know. So I'll be sitting there and obviously we set up a time, we're meeting it and so I, so first of all he will always be never turns up on time, right? And we're waiting and it's like we should do the meetings and stuff and you get there and it's like oh so so late and stuff anyway. Hmm. When he does get there, I've got a few things going on. So in between it's two. Yeah. On his mobile phone and stuff, right? Yeah. Not that he doesn't expect the same thing from me, right? My time has to be dedicated. Yeah, but his yeah, he his can do it. His time is important, right? And it's he's a big businessman, right? Oops, sorry. <laughs> um, all those sort of things, but and he doesn't mean it. There's no way. They don't mean it. Uh, they, they don't know that. Like, they don't know that. But, they, but they, they yeah. don't know they're doing they don't know. it. But they, they will be sitting there like yeah. it's like, and I'm just thinking to two hours for five, ten minutes conversation, I'll now have to go because, yeah, it was yeah. only this much time, right? So, like, yeah. so give me so, a, oh, sorry, go So, you, you keep doing, falling into that trap out of either respect or friendship or whatever, like, but yeah. just. Okay, so know. you can't do business with friends. That's the one rule. <laughs> You can't do business with friends. When I say you can't do business with friends, it doesn't literally mean that you can't work with friends. What it means is that there has to be certain rules and boundaries. Yeah. The friendship stays out of the door. Yeah. The rules, the rules and steps we need to follow, right? Yeah. So now, somebody here, I mean, I can give to Alka as well, but I, don't, I want you guys to practice. Yeah. What would you, or what advice would you give how to break that ego frame next time, Arka. Give me some sort of your way of thinking. So now this is this is a setting, right? Social setting. So he's a business partner. He comes in late all the time. And he when he comes in, wasted a couple of hours, he comes in with his phone in his hand. When you know you have that discussion, you want to have the discussion which is supposed to happen to get you to the next level, he's on the phone doing something. So he does not have that uh, presence of mind to get to help whatever needs to be done, right? So now you have this frame, which is an ego frame is coming to you. What would you do to actually bust the frame? What would you do? Let's let's give something. What would you do? About what? What would we say? Like, what's, what would we say? I don't know. I've been in this trap many times. Is it? Okay. My issue is I have to do and present to you. Yeah. And they've come there with their own biggest ego they have. Yes. And they are there to just to yeah. So let me let me give you my example, right? In that, what would I if I'm sorry? Yeah, go on. Sorry, no, no. Hang on. Let me clarify this. We're not talking about ego. No, we're not talking about ego. So not physical ego. I have just given names to the frames. It's just a name. It's a character for the people. So, how did you feel like? So let me ask you. Let me ask you a question. But again, that's what I'm saying. Like, 
when when we first started, like when the first working group started, he actually did mention that that because he's been traveling, he's been moving in and out, he will be late for meetings and stuff. Mm -hmm. Ganesh, I'm giving you the authority to start the programs, mm -hmm. start the sessions. I'll come during it. Right? So if anything is special you need from me, just send me a message before. Yeah. So let me ask you a question in this space, right? Mm -hmm. So what's the end goal? So when we understand the end goal for any meeting and social settings, yeah, right. So end goal is this. End goal is this. End goal is this. So now I just want to explain to you guys, this is our end goal. When you want to get to the end goal, you want to make sure that are in any social settings. I'm putting it here, say alpha status, you know, in publicly or in meetings or any social place, where you are not controlled by some other people and you have that alpha status. You're not beta, you're alpha. What is alpha? What is alpha? Right? Alpha is the frame control often seen as seeking out the alpha status in a group, right? We want to get that alpha status. If you want to be an expert, if you want to be authority, if you want to be leader, you need to have that alpha status. You don't want to be subordinate. Right? So when you have alpha status, means that people listen to you. You don't react to what they say. Mm -hmm. Going back to the example, when somebody is saying, I'm running 10 million late, here's my message, you control, you do what you're supposed to do. What it means is, he's the alpha. He is still the alpha. Yes. Right? He's telling you what to do. He's still the alpha. You're not the alpha. You're controlled by somebody else. You're doing what somebody else told you to do. In jobs, we do that. Yes, that's why the job is. Our boss is an alpha there. So he can't, can't take that away. Right? So that's given. So I'm not saying that dispute with your boss tomorrow. You know, you might get, not have a job. So if you're working for somebody else, that's the rule of the game. Boss is an alpha. Right? But in a business setting, you are the boss. You are the boss in your business. You want to have alpha status in every place. So you need to understand how to have that alpha status. Any frame controlling you do, the end goal is to give you that status. We as humans, we work based on status. Everything we do is based on status. You do it, you like it, or you don't like it. It's everything is about status. Either... Yeah, this is good, right? Yes. And, um, yes. Obviously, I won't give up. And the same thing will happen to the opposite person. They will yeah. not want to give up. So that's the difficulty. Because more than what's everybody else is doing, the person I think would be me myself. If I put that frame up, so I don't have to do it. What's sort of putting in what sort of somebody else is having a certain frame and shouldn't be clashing. There's actually a strategy in, in, in game.